Dear professional women, maybe it's time to reconsider leadership. Women represent just 5% of Fortune 500 CEOs, occupy only 10% of the top management positions in S&P 1500 companies, and are only 6% of all venture capital board representatives. It seems obvious that when it comes to leadership, maybe women just don't have what it takes. In this video, I break down the top three reasons women can't leave. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and bell now to be notified every time I post a new video about how to live more and fear less. I have the privilege of being a speaker and trainer to leaders and CEOs across the globe, men and women alike. Well, if I'm honest, it's mostly men. And the more I research it and collect feedback and data, the more I think I've landed on the top three reasons that women can't leave. So without further ado, here they are. Number one. Women don't have the qualities that model leadership. It's true. When you look up the definition of leadership in the Merriam-Webster dictionary, you get a person who has commanding authority or influence. Synonyms include boss, boss man, foreman, headman, helmsman, kingpin, master, higher up, lead man, dominator, overlord, king, prince. Hmm, where are my queens in there? Doesn't actually feel like a particularly welcoming space for a woman. And while I'm making a sweeping generalization here, Women biologically are more driven to collaborate, to organize, and to resolve conflict and problem solve together, rather than as a commanding authority. And while it might be easy to say, well, the dictionary is just a little behind and stuck in a patriarchal bordering on misogynistic scope of traditional leadership, we can't place all the fault on Webster. It's how we as a culture have accepted the definition. Otherwise, we wouldn't see that 91% of the top 10 leadership books from the last 10 years are written by, you guessed it, men, white men, in case you were wondering. Let me be clear, a lot of those books actually dive into very feminine ideas around leading collaboratively with empathy and vulnerability. And there are certain times when a leader does have to stand up, stand out and be an authority that drives the team forward in a commanding kind of way. My point here is that men don't make bad leaders, but women have been inherently labeled as unfit for leadership by the traditional definition. We just don't fit the mold. It's like asking a dolphin and a monkey to have a race up a tree. Whoever wins is the best leader. Um, what if the next problem that needs solving is in the water? The more we can be conscious of the ways we define leadership, it's my hope that we will begin to see those paradigms shift to better incorporate and honor the entire spectrum of traditional masculine and feminine qualities as equally valuable in leadership. The second reason that women can't lead is that they spend too much time and focus on the home and their families. Uh, no shit. Look at the amount of time we spend doing other work. For men and women who both worked outside the home, there was a 37% difference in how much time women spent doing unpaid work. That's the equivalent of 95 more eight hour workdays per year unpaid. Add to this the wage gap of earning only 79 cents to a man's dollar in paid work and the difference becomes um, glaring. You know what? I agree. Women do spend too much time and focus on the home and family, but that's not resolved by keeping them out of leadership positions. That's resolved by having partners step up more at home and having businesses honor and respect paid family leave for all genders. What do you think needs to change so that women can lead more effectively or be welcomed more into leadership space? Let me know in the comments below. Finally, the third reason I hear that women can't lead is that they are too hormonal, which makes them far too emotional. True, we do have hormones and emotions. What's false is that men don't. Men have a daily cycle of testosterone that's incredibly sensitive to stress. And scientific studies have found that testosterone has been linked to financial risk-taking behaviors. Something I'd suggest is pretty important to control if you're in a position of leadership. Look, men, I'm not saying you can't control your testosterone surges, but if that's the argument we're going to use for why women can't leave, you just want to level the playing field a bit. So there it is, the top three reasons why women can't leave. In case I wasn't clear, I don't think the issue is actually with women. Women can make exceptional leaders. Maybe it's time we stop blaming women and instead turn our attention to redefining the systems and structures 
and even the very word leadership to be more inclusive for all genders. From there, I'm pretty sure we'll see the very best of all genders emerge in leadership spaces. If you're a woman feeling like you just don't belong in leadership or are struggling with imposter syndrome, reach out. I'd love to work with you to help move you into a more confident, authentic space to live more fearless. Reach out to me at info at RebeccaHeist.com and let's schedule a call to talk. No charge or just take the imposter syndrome quiz linked in the description below and download more specific tips and tricks to become your most powerful, authentic self. Thanks for watching. If you are enjoying this content, I suspect that you're hungry for more. So check out these other videos here to help you lead from your best, most fearless space. I think you might like it. And please do me the favor of subscribing or liking the video so you don't miss any more upcoming content. Until next time, live more, fear less.